Hello everyone. My purpose is to inform you about Glenn Ligon, whose work explores race, language, desire, sexuality, and identity. Today we will focus in on his work related to race. Before discussing his work, it is important to understand some of Ligon's background. He was born in South Bronx, New York in 1960. After graduating with a bachelor's from Wesleyan University in 1982, he worked at a law firm and painted in his spare time. He was highly influenced by literature and began using quotes in his paintings from a selection of authors, such as Zora Neale Hurston, Jean Jeanette, Walt Whitman, and Ralph Ellison. In 1989, he hosted his first exhibition called How It Feels to Be Colored Me in Brooklyn. Here he showcases large text-based paintings which established his reputation. His stenciling is purposely smudged to illustrate and emphasize each author's message. Glenn Ligon works with a lot of materials, but primarily works with neon lights, printing ink, oil, coal dust, and silk screens, which is mesh cloth stretched over a wooden frame. Ligon's work is mainly influenced by the history of slavery, the Civil Rights Movement, African American Literature, Politics and Racism in America. His thoughts on racism really show through his artwork. He uses quotes from writers such as Gertrude Stein and James Baldwin who criticize racism. Additionally, he uses quotes from comedian Richard Pryor who connected racism with capitalism. Glenn Ligon has been inspired by artists such as Robert Rushenberg. Ligon was amazed by Rushenberg's ability to decontextualize images. Ligon was also influenced by Jasper Johns, who was an American painter because of his use of language. Furthermore, Ligon was interested in abstract painters like Kooning, Klein, and Pollock. Glenn Ligon's art responds to racial issues in our society. He doesn't want issues such as slavery and systematic racism throughout American history to just be events of the past. He likes to contemporize and shed light on these events as a way to constantly remind people of the past. For example, he recently created this work of art to express how America is backwards in their beliefs which will be discussed shortly. But as you can see, Ligon's style is easy to identify. He uses quotes from writers to create text-based abstractions. He uses black and white ink, and print, and often layers the text. He also uses neon lights to convey his thoughts on current racial tensions. In the 80s, Ligon was learning to be an abstract painter. First, Ligon worked with colors but shifted to working with black and white. 
Here, you can see that the canvas on the left is yellow with black ink, while on the right is just black and white. Going through a black and white phase gave Ligon time to think about color before he transitioned to using colors again. Here are two pieces he made as he was making the transition back to color. Some critics like his artwork, such as Robert Storr, who's Dean of the Yale School of Art. He said, Glenn is someone who has figured out how to give conceptualism some grit. He is a political artist and has an unwillingness to be boxed in. Some people believe Glenn's artwork was meant to shock the public, but Ligon responded that his work is all about language. Well-known people, such as the Obamas, have also appreciated his artwork. When Obama was in office, the piece you see on the right called Black Like Me No. 2 was on display in the family sitting room of the White House. This piece is a tall white canvas which contains a repeated phrase that says, All traces of the griffin I had been were wiped from existence, which was a quote from a novel called Black Like Me. As you can see, Ligon used black ink and layered the words together towards the bottom. Some interdisciplinary connections can be connected to African American literature, poetry, black history, and politics. I found it interesting that abstract art isn't all about shapes and lines. I like how Ligon incorporates text with quotes that shed light upon racial issues. Now back to this work of art titled Ruck and Figure. The title itself means figure from the back which describes a person who had his or her back towards the viewer. It gives off a mood of isolation, and this neon sign says America backwards. One interpretation of this is that America is backwards with their beliefs. It's the land of the free, where all men are created equal, yet everyone isn't treated equally. Usually blacks and other minorities are disadvantaged because of institutionalized racism and white privilege. This shows that race plays a huge part in society's beliefs. Another artwork that I wanted to discuss was this one called No Room, which is oil and acrylic on canvas. This is a quote from Richard Pryor, who was a stand-up comedian of the 70s and 80s, taken from his video, Live and Smokin'. It states, I was a nigger for 23 years. I gave that shit up. No room for, no room for advancement. This is connected to race because it's true that blacks were mainly oppressed, especially before the Civil Rights Movement and the Jim Crow era. Glenn Ligon's work continues to address the issues of today's society, and he uses primarily text, print, and ink to express his thoughts on race and remind others that racism is still an obstacle to overcome.